CNN's Candy Crowley begins our coverage with the Republican frontrunner's day on the trail. Good morning. I'd like to buy a cup of coffee, please. The price of being the frontrunner by so much for so long is that tonight it's not enough to win. He has to win well enough. Well, you know, there's been great expectations surrounding me ever since I got started. And uh, so I'm used to it. But uh, this is a long process. On the morning of the nighttime caucuses, there is nothing to do but more of the same. So George Bush worked at Des Moines Restaurant and the rally crowds in Ames and Perry. You never know when a morning handshake will turn into a nighttime vote. My only butterfly is that people don't go to the polls. And uh, we've, got, we've laid the groundwork for a great evening tonight. We've got a fantastic organization. My message has been heard. And the only thing now, the only thing we can do is just work hard to get the people to the polls. Butterflies are no. Bush, with his wife now at his side, seems relaxed, even playful, as he goes through Iowa's final paces. I can't tell you how happy I am. How happy I am to have her here. One of the toughest things about running for president is I miss my family. I miss our girls. I miss the cats. They don't miss me. I miss the dog. She does miss me. To a packed room on the campus of Iowa State, Bush delivered a permutation of his standard stump speech, laced with the pressure of the moment and the urgency of the hour. I must confess I'm a little nervous when I hear people say, I've been reading all those polls. Governor, you don't need my help. The only poll that matters is the one that's taken tonight. That's the only poll that matters. The only one that's going to count when people around the country say, what does Iowa think? Who does Iowa want to carry our, our message? Is the one when the actual folks show up. And to my friends who are here who are going to be for me, thanks and take a friend and a neighbor with you. It's really important. You meet a lot of people along the way to the Iowa caucuses. Monday's close encounter of the unexpected kind, the Democratic senator from Nebraska, who has just announced he will not run again. Governor Bush. Bob Perry. Hey, Bob, how are you, buddy? How are you doing? Listen, I, I, that was a very good speech. You sound shocked. <laughs> no, I'm not shocked at all. I am, uh, I am sorry. You're leaving. Oh, you're very kind. Thanks. I met that. Thanks. A Bradley supporter, Kerry dropped in on Bush from a nearby Bradley event. Candy Crowley with the Governor's Day now to Bush's main rival here in Iowa. Steve Forbes has invested a lot of time and money in his campaign here. And as CNN's Jonathan Carl reports, he is hoping for a political payoff in these caucuses tonight. Steve Forbes, how are you? Good to see you, Steve. Nice to see the candidate you. makes a quick hoping stop at Scruffy's yeah. Pizza in Des Moines. Yeah. Good to see you. How are you? Pretty good. Hope you'll be out tonight. We've got some good ideas on taxes and uh, other things. Most polls may show Forbes trailing by more than 20 points in Iowa, but he seems to be winning the Scruffy straw poll. Non-binding, of course. Going to do well. Going to have a strong showing tonight. In the morning, Forbes dropped by WHO Radio for a couple interviews. Afterwards, he talked to reporters. Our people are principled and committed. They're not here for a horse race. They're here for a cause. They believe in my bold and strong proposals. Later, Forbes kept up the radio barrage with telephone interviews from his hotel room. I am the true conservative candidate. I think in the days and weeks ahead, uh, more and more Republicans are going to rally around me, and that's why I'm going to win, because I'll be running against two moderates. By caucus time, that Forbes is, will have done more than 20 interviews today with Iowa America radio stations. His campaign it. claims that's Tomorrow a record and a tactic he hopes that's... will get supporters to turn out for him. Publicly, the Forbes campaign has been saying that they are hoping to get about 20 to 25 percent of the vote tonight. But privately, Forbes strategists say that they have a grassroots network in this state that they hope can get 30,000 of their supporters to the caucuses. If that holds, and depending on turnout, they could get close to 30 percent of the vote, something they would clearly spin as a better than expected second place finish. Judy? All right, Jonathan Carl with the Forbes campaign. In a moment, we will talk to Forbes campaign manager Bill Dal Call, but first we are joined by the Bush campaign manager, Carl Rove. Carl, thank you for being with us. Happy to be with you. If Steve Forbes gets 30 percent or even better. What does that say about uh, the challenge to uh, Governor Bush here? Well, I think, look, uh, we're, we're focused on getting the biggest vote possible for Governor Bush, and we'll let the others worry about their percentages. But our object is to get the largest vote that we possibly can for Governor Bush and hopefully to meet and exceed the record for 
the Republican side of the Iowa caucus, which is 37 percent. Well, now you say 37 percent, but you know there are a number of folks who are saying that's really laughable because if if Governor Bush is only able to get 37 percent, the front runner nationally all the time, the money you've spent in this state, isn't that really going to be seen as a as a big disappointment? Well, that's like saying that uh, it really didn't matter that we beat the four minute mile because it was an English when it was 1952. If we beat the record, we beat the record, Judy. All right, let me ask you about uh, a, an allegation from the Forbes camp today. They are saying that you all are behind a negative phone campaign in collaboration with the moderate Republican leadership conference. What do you all say to that? Well, that's laughable. It's simply not true. And, and uh, what was interesting was the press reports then revealed that the Forbes campaign admitted they were conducting push polls with negative phone calls to Bush supporters saying, would you vote for Governor Bush if you knew that? And then proceed to trash him on his record as governor and tax, taxes and education. So, but as to the original allegation, absolutely not true. There's an allegation a minute from the Forbes campaign and this is just another one of them. Well, Forbes, Gary Bauer, and uh, uh, Alan Keyes all say that Governor Bush is insufficiently anti-abortion. All three of them talk about it almost daily and they say they're going to continue to talk about it. Well, talk is what, what they can do. Governor Bush has actually done it. He's the only one of those four who signed a significant piece of anti-abortion legislation. In fact, National Association for Abortion Rights says he signed 18 pieces of pro-life legislation as governor of Texas, including a parental notification law that's a model for the country. So they can talk, they can, that's what campaigns are about, but Governor Bush has a proven record on But this. from your competitors on the right in the Republican Party, their point is your governor would impose no litmus test on a Supreme Court nominee, and he's not pledging to overturn Roe versus yeah. Wade. Well, the governor's made clear that he will appoint strict constructions, people who are not judicial activists, but instead realize that there's a limited role to the judiciary to strictly interpret the law and not legislate. And if that's insufficient for, for, for our opponents, fine, but that's what the, where the governor's, from, uh, the governor's view is. How worried are you and the other folks in the Bush campaign about John McCain's doing better in the state of South Carolina? Uh, we're doing great in South Carolina. We've, uh, John McCain has spent a million and a half on television, and he's uh, gone from 21 to 24 in the polls. We've gone from 52 to 51. So we feel very good about South Carolina. South Carolina's Bush country. And uh, another question that's, that's just come up in the last day or two, Governor Bush was holding regular news conferences, answering reporters' questions almost daily. Right. Some questions about abortion, some other subjects that people say are uncomfortable came up. Now you're not holding those anymore. Well, I don't, what I don't, does it say about what he would do if he were president? No, I don't think that's accurate. We had a news conference today. We'll hold news conferences and make ourselves available to members of the press every day that we're on the campaign trail. All right, Carl Rove, Great. thank you very much.